So they finally did it. They made a Goosebumps movie based on all the classic books. Classic children's bestsellers, scary books. Something like that. Um, not the first time this has happened. There were TV movies. They were usually based around like one story, but this is the first one to, you know, be big screen and commercially gigantic uh, with varied success. Um, let's just get right into it. The movie is about a boy, uh, Zach, by, played by Dylan Minnette, and his mom, uh, Gail, played by Amy Ryan. Uh, moving to a small town of Madison, Delaware, where they happen to live right next door to the man himself, R.L. Stein, played by Jack Black, and his daughter Hannah, played by Odea Rush. So the whole draw to this movie is, of course, the fact that R.L. Stein's books are real, or at least when he wrote them, they became real. So he trapped them in manuscripts, locked them up in his house, and then exposition here, exposition there. Next thing you know, they've all been unleashed, and Slappy the Dummy is sort of the ringleader, unleashing all these monsters into the town. What I found really interesting, though, was a lot of the R.L. Stein books weren't so much about creatures. Uh, a lot of them were just like the psychological aspects, or more so the main character making a poor decision, or being roped into the situation, or just something eerie happening, but it's not exactly some big monster that's trying to kill them. Say Cheese and Die is a good example of this, you know, it wasn't so much a monster that could eat them, <laughs> you know, sort of thing. Uh, why I'm Afraid of Bees is another good example. And probably the biggest example I could think of, because I find it the most terrifying out of all the Goosebumps books, uh, and I'm pretty sure it was also a TV movie, is The Haunted Mask this concept of a kid wishing for something that backfires on him and could potentially kill him. I find that more scary. I, that's more seeded into reality as if being a kid and making a mistake that could harm you and harm others. You know, I, I find that a lot scarier than a big bad monster. <laughs> you know, this idea of being trapped with something and potentially dying from it. It's that, that kind of stuff. But this movie is all, you know, he, he wrote monsters, and that's what we get to see. It makes sense, because you can't really bring that concept into a movie, again, with a, unless you make the whole movie based around that. Um, but I just find, found it interesting that uh, they sort of play it off as, you know, this is what R.L. Stein did. He wrote monster books, but they weren't all monsters. One thing I appreciate about this movie is that it was written... Like the, the whole plot, how the whole thing plays out, is written very much like a Goosebumps novel. Uh, this whole idea of a kid who's an outcast, a fish out of water, having to deal with these, you know, being a kid issues while at the same time creepy stuff is happening. That's exactly what this movie is. You, of course, you have Dylan, or it's not Dylan, Zach. Uh, you have Zach moving to this town, you know, he's completely new, again, fish out of water. He befriends this kid named Champ played by Ryan Lee, who's like this total loser, and they get roped into this grand adventure that involves monsters and creepy crap going on. And, you know, there's character growth. You know, by the end of it, he's no longer an outcast or socially awkward or whatever. He's grown and in, come into his own after this, this adventure. And that's essentially every Goosebumps book is like that. I'm pretty sure every Goosebumps protagonist was that sort of, you know, just moved into town or isn't accepted in school, has no friends sort of thing, and at the end it's all better kind of thing. I, I, I thought I, I appreciated that. Um, if that was what they were going for, I guess if that wasn't, then that's pretty lame because that's a really terrible way to tell a story. It's very, uh, very typical storytelling. But um, I, I saw it as an homage to the actual books by making the movie essentially its own uh, Goosebumps book. <clears throat> and one thing I didn't expect going into this movie, it is genuinely funny. Like, it is pretty hilarious. Like, the characters, the timing, uh, some of the gags even, like, it was a pretty funny movie. I didn't see that coming. Um, and I, again, I really appreciated the fact that I was laughing out loud in the theaters. Going in to see a kid's movie, 
you know, you don't expect to actually laugh <laughs> unless it's like directed specifically to adults. And I've, again, didn't feel like it was like that either. It wasn't, you know, here's the humor for kids and here's the humor for adults who are forced to go see this movie with kids. No, it was just all around just hilarious. Uh, weird. <laughs> it was really well written that way. Um, again, good stuff. Uh, the Bad. Um, speaking of R.L. Stein's monsters, and I did name a few off, uh, my biggest issue was the lack of monsters. Um, what I mean by that is, as I said before, Slappy has a big part in it. Uh, the Shocker on Shock Street, Mantis, has a big part in it. Uh, the Werewolf, uh, the Abominable Snowman, you know, they all sort of have these cameos. They're not really cameos, they're actually, you know, part of what the protagonists are faced up against. But everything else is just sort of thrown in there as a cameo, you know, just sort of a background character. Uh, the uh, tower monster, hold on, I did a lot of research on these books just to make sure I didn't forget something, but unfortunately uh, it's really hard looking this stuff up. Um, I can't even read that. What does that say? Oh, the Night in Terror Tower, the Executioner guy. I remember owning that book. I guess I never read it. Um, he's just sort of staying in the background in one scene. Uh, the Mummy, same thing. He's just sort of back there. Things like that. It's like all these monsters. The, the idea is unleashing all these R.L. Stein monsters, but you only get a handful of them. Everything else is sort of in the background or just completely not there. Uh, to begin with, um, what the hell is this? Chicken chicken? What is going on in that cover? Okay, well that wasn't there. <laughs> Fuck. Calling all creeps. Uh, oh, these are newer ones. I remember having one, oh, the gnomes. The gnome scene was actually really cool. I liked, I liked the gnome part. The gnomes were really fun. Um, they were actually legitimately scary, I felt. <laughs> um, chicken, chicken, wow. I just can't get that image out of my head now. Uh, but my point being, you know, this whole cavalcade of R.L. Stein monsters, but you only get a handful and everything else is either in the background or just completely, you know, they're, they're just nowhere to be seen. Um, I found that kind of disappointing. Another problem uh, with the plot, uh, as I said before, a lot of R.L. Stein characters, uh, you know, they face a problem at first, they're over it at the end of the movie. <clears throat> um, one thing I found interesting was at the beginning of the movie, you learn that this kid is dealing with a dead father. He's moving to a new town with his mom, and you learn that his father had just recently passed. Okay, so... By the end of the movie, he learns to deal with it, or he finally accepts it, or, you know, he he's on the path to, you know, grieve. You know, he's not allowing himself to grieve, but now he is, or something. There's going to be this big emotional scene where he finally, you know, just lets it happen. No, in fact, it's never brought up again, uh, his dead father. It's in Act 1, and uh, that's it. At the end of the movie, it's more about him dealing with high school and being accepted at high school. Nothing about a dead father. Uh, so I was like, well, what was the point of that? Um, yeah, just, just really weird. Just threw that in there for the pathos, but then did nothing with the rest of it. The Ugly, unfortunately, comes with a spoiler. So there it is. Uh... At the end of the movie, uh, well, okay, so you learn, again, as I said, that R.L. Stein, when he wrote these, you know, so, something to do with how he wrote them, mixed with his typewriter, made it magical. I don't, I didn't, they didn't clear that up at all. But he, he you learn that, you know, he brought these creatures to life um, and everything. Uh, you learn that Hannah, his daughter, is also a creation of his book. Uh, there's this big emotional scene at the end where it's like uh, Zach has to write a book to, to finish all of 
you know, to, to suck all the characters back in the book, he has to write a book about all the characters being sucked in the book. Um, but he also realizes that, that means Hannah has to go too, because she's, a, you know, ghost, or, you know, a work of R.L. Stein. Which actually, now that I think about it, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> um, they somehow got away with having it be like this old guy wrote a book about a 16 year old daughter to have as a companion. I, hmm, it's weird. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, um, yeah, so he created Hannah to be, you know, a companion. Again, 16 year old girl, but still, you know, innocent companion person. Uh, Zach falls for her, of course, uh, but then realizes she's a ghost, and at the end she gets sucked in the book. So at the big denouement, the end of the movie, um, everybody's story is kind of wrapping up, and you learn that R.L. Stein wrote another book and recreated Hannah. Now Hannah has come back to life, and Zach gets to date a character in a book that R.L. Stein created. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's really... And he burns the book, too. He burns the book, so she's forever in the real world now. As a figment of R.L. Stein's imagination that this other kid is in love with. Uh, that in itself is weird, but also the fact that R.L. Stein is basically God, then. He can create any living creature just by writing a book about it. Like, how is that not a big issue or how is that not how did Zach not stop and think okay could you write my dad into a book <laughs> like <laughs> what the fuck um yeah just the whole idea of R.L. Stein could create life now apparently just out of thin air um was a bit silly uh that was the ugly um but goosebumps all in all I give ah <sighs> It's tough. It's really tough. I'm going to give it 3 out of 5 garden gnomes. Out of 5. Yeah. Scary garden gnomes. It's good stuff. I'd recommend it.